Some animal babies at the zoo are warm and fuzzy, and some are small and slimy. Down here in the Great Barrier Reef Gallery, who better to talk about small and slimy than Gary, our aquarium manager? Hey Gary, I'm not saying you're small and slimy, oh, okay? thanks a lot, but I am in management, so oh, slimy, it can, slimy, yeah, yeah, you know. No, you've got how many fish down here? I've got about 80 some fish down here. Most of them are covered with a slime layer. Um, and the jellyfish, oh my gosh, they're nothing but a ball of slime the once balls. they're out of water. The real so, slime balls. Yeah. Are sharks uh, not slimy, right? For the most part, they're not. They actually feel like a cool. smooth sandpaper black um, tip. when you run across them. Um, our black tips, zebra shark, and our epaulets both have um, small scales called dermal denticles, which uh, if you run across them the wrong way, they'll actually rough your skin up like uh, really, sandpaper. They really yeah. do feel like sandpaper. So there's three different kinds of sharks in here, though the sharks that really look like sharks. Those are the black tip reef sharks. You'll see them swimming around throughout the entire tank. Yeah. Our zebra shark, which usually has a tendency to lay on the bottom every once in a while, he's the one with the big spots. Yeah, zebras, but they've got spots. And he kind of looks like a huge version of the, the, the some of the catfish that people right. keep in their home aquariums. Yep. And then there's a third kind that's sometimes a little trickier to find. The epaulette sharks, yep. They oh. have the big black spot on the back of their, right behind their head. But Gary, you usually can't see the epaulets. What is she doing over there? She's looking for a spot to lay an egg, I think, right at the moment. Sharks lay eggs. Yep, actually they lay eggs. They have live birth and they have eggs that uh, develop within the female and they have live birth in that. Different sharks. Do different, different sharks things. do different one things. One kind of shark does one kind of thing, and epaulet sharks lay eggs, right? Right. And we actually, we were talking about small slimy babies. We've, we've had a lot of uh, epaulet shark babies. We've had about 30 to 40 babies hatched this year, and we've sent them to a bunch of different aquariums, but we also have a lot that are still in our holding areas. Uh, our sharks are still laying eggs. As you can see, this epaulet's kind of looking for a spot that maybe she could put wow. an egg. And we've got an egg right over here off the corner of the what? coral. No, that, uh, wait a minute, go back to her. Why is she looking for that spot, Gary? Why didn't she just lay it down on the gravel or something? The sharks will lay the eggs in the coral. They have like a frilly um, attachment called tendrils. And they catch the tendrils on pieces of coral. And then they wrap it around the coral and that protects the egg while it sits there to develop. And she doesn't sit on an egg like a chicken will. What happens nope. to that egg? Once she lays the egg, she leaves, and in about 130 days, a small uh, epaulette shark will hatch out of it, and it's on its own, ready wow. to go. Now, you said there's actually an egg laying on the, 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 the floor of the aquarium yep. here, though, right? right over here in the corner. And she must not have attached to the, the coral. It was probably attached to the coral at some time. Um, a lot of our coral doesn't have really good attachment spots, so it depends on where she lays the egg in the tank. Right. Um, you can kind of see the fuzz on top of that egg. And that's the tendrils that they usually use to attach it to the coral. I bet you've worked out a way for us to get a closer view of the shark egg. Oh yeah, they're upstairs and holding. Let's do it. Gary, to get to see the shark pups, we gotta go behind the scenes. That's and, I mean, this is where you work every day, but people at home... Yeah, they don't get to see this a whole lot, no. so... Here we go. So these steps lead from the aquarium gallery up to the aquarium work area where yep. you feed, where you... The divers enter the tank to clean. Yeah, basically where we do all our work. It's the main nerve center of the aquarium. The main nerve center. And you're the king of the aquarium, right? <laughs> Welcome to your kingdom, right? Right. Not There's... many people get up here. Yeah, not a lot of people come up here, um, but the school kids and that, when they do get to come up here, they're always surprised on how big the area is and that we're actually standing above the aquarium right. tanks. The people are underneath here, the fish are in the big tanks, and but this is where you guys work to be able yep. to feed, to clean, you got your extra holding tanks for jellyfish, water chemistry. Uh, it's where you produce the jellyfish food. Yep. But we're here to see shark babies, right? Right. Or shark eggs. I shark guess, eggs. First yep. Off. We'll come around this area. Okay, Gary. So we've seen your pumps and filters. I want to see some shark pups. Okay, it's right through here. Ah, shark area. Staff only. Why staff only? Well, we like to kind of keep the traffic up here to a minimum because the sharks are kind of uh, well, temperamental. Well, it's a 50,000 gallon tank also, and it's about nine foot deep. Right, nine feet deep. Nine feet deep. Let's go out on the catwalk over the sharks and nine right. foot deep water. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, in case some of you can't swim, nine feet deep, don't want to fall in with the sharks. Wait a minute, Gary, let's, let's look down here, because this is 
pretty cool. This is the shark tank, right? This is the shark tank. 50,000 gallons. Nine foot deep, and it's designed to hold black tip reef sharks. Looks a lot bigger than it does downstairs. That's right. It's about 15 feet across from one side to the other, and these back sections of the wall are about 22 foot each. Uh, it gives the sharks a swimming area and allows them to sleep during, in the tank. And behind us here, three aqua blue kitty pools. Right, for our shark pups. Our shark pup breeding facility. Right. Perfect. It's kind of high tech. We'll uh, actually go in and get the eggs out of the tanks during diving and we'll bring them up here in a bucket and we'll hang them up here for about 130 days until they hatch out. Because we really don't want them hatching out in the display tank. Yeah, if they hatch out in the display tank, they're so small they become shark food really quick. Shark bait. Shark bait. Got Ooh, it. <laughs> yeah, so. Let's look at some shark eggs, man. All right. Well, we'll start. I'll show you some of the different stages that the eggs are at. Let me switch sides with you. You can see here, these eggs actually have embryos oh, in them. Man. You can see the yolk. You sure can. And what you're doing here is called candling, right? Right. You simply take a light. Hold it behind the egg. The egg is semi-transparent. The light shines through and lets you see a silhouette of what's inside. Yep. This way we can keep track on the eggs on how the embryos are developing inside. And this one actually is empty. I was going to say you can't fool me, man. That's empty. Yep. And this was hatched out this morning. Just this morning? Just this morning. Here, I'll remove it so you can get a better look. Here is your shark egg. Oh my gosh, is that cool. Let's let everybody at home get a closer look at this. Is that shiny? And th this is the part that usually hooks to the coral? Yep, it's called tendrils. It's kind of like a soft, almost silk, that the sharks use to attach it to the corals. We use the tendrils to suspend them in the water so the egg would actually be hanging in our kitty pool right. like it would be hanging on the coral. So this is the string that you guys had? Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh. And then the shark, as the egg develops, it'll actually open up a hole. Now, let me find it right there here. There it is. There, it, there is. it is. Is that something? And a baby came out of that hole from yeah. that egg this morning. Exactly. I bet you can show him to us. Yeah, I sure can. Let's do it. He's actually right there. There he is. There and he is, right there. Yep. That's a one day old baby. That's or not a, even that. Yep. He just hatched out overnight. And we've got a couple of others down here. These guys are about a week old. They hatched out uh, earlier last, well, at the, actually at the end of last week. So. But these guys will stay in, these, in the pool here for about a couple of weeks until we make sure that they're eating well. Right. And the interesting thing about these guys is you saw them swimming around or if you watch them walk around here, they actually use their fins kind of like legs. They, they, sure, crawl, they sure do. They crawl around on the bottom. Is that cool? Because this is this this shark will never be a cruiser like those black tips. This is a bottom dwelling shark who picks up things that fall to the bottom. That's where they make their living and eat. Yep. Live, right. That's yeah. correct. Now, being able to to reproduce sharks here at our zoo is a cool thing. Just because I mean it's kind of a testament to you your skill as an aquarist, right? Kind of that and a little bit of luck that plays into it. Yeah. It's also significant because uh, while most birds and mammals from in the zoo were either born at this zoo or born in another zoo and moved around, a lot of the fish and aquatic specimens you see at our aquarium and other aquariums were still collected from the wild. Yeah, we still collect them from the wild. So any kind of captive breeding is really significant for our field. So Gary, you've had, we've had 40 uh, epileptic shark pups. What are we doing with all of them? Um, we're keeping a few of them, but a lot of them we're sending around to the country at different aquariums. Like Texas State Aquarium has four of our pups and Newport Aquarium down in Kentucky um, has right. about four of our pups also. Now visitors to the zoo this summer, they can't come up here unless they see you and ask you, um, how are we gonna let our own visitors see these epaulette pups? Well, we modified one of our jellyfish tanks this year so we can actually see the epaulette pups. And we've got a couple of them on display. Excellent, excellent. So it's another success story at the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo? Yeah. Awesome, congratulations.